Biology here and this video is related to ecology so this is AQA GCSE biology only and this is the ecology section and this is uh, following on from uh, another one of my videos related to food security so for this video I'm going to be talking about farming techniques and food production with the same theme in terms of can we feed 9 billion people in the future so how are we going to how have we adapted farming techniques to produce more food let's do just do a quick spec check so uh, related to farming techniques the first thing is about the efficiency of food production about restricting energy transfer so this again relates to earlier work on energy transfers and, and transfer of biomass um in terms of uh, restricting that transfer so that you get more biomass of livestock so um, we'll talk about how you limit the movement of animals how you control the temperature of their surroundings and about high protein foods to increase growth then a key thing i do want you to look at is the uh, skills development so you need to understand the ethical objections to some modern intensive farming methods um, and also we need to then evaluate. So evaluate means looking at the pros and cons or the advantages and disadvantages. And we need to look at the um, about modern fa farming techniques because there are different viewpoints on what we call intensive farming methods. Here's a quick recap of energy transfer. So uh, if you remember, um, in terms of an animal eating the producer, so for example, grass, uh, some of that will be stored as biomass in the tissue, but a lot of it will be uh, transferred through respiration by heat loss, uh, also excretion, uh, so undigested materials, and obviously movement as well. So over the last 50 years or so, there's been an increasing amount of what we call intensive farming. So this is techniques that make food production more efficient by restricting energy transfer from food animals to the environment. So animals uh, could be limited in their movement. So if you look at the pictures here, so I'm actually in with the cows, I'm gonna move. Um, so you can see, for example, uh, fish farming at the top left. So they're restricting the movement. You got chickens in barns um, in close quarters. Um, uh, here's a pig stall. In many countries, this is banned and that is not allowed. So we, we need to talk about that, actually, that this isn't happening in every country. And then cattle or cows are being bred indoors rather than outside in a field. Um, so animals have limited movement in temperature controlled barns, temperature controlled because it means that less um, energy is lost through uh, respiration and heat transfer so and it's therefore more of that energy is used for growth of biomass they're also fed high protein diets uh, some of those will contain antibiotics to stop them getting ill um, an issue with antibiotics though is that it could um, mean that bacteria could develop resistance over the future due to the overuse of antibiotics and the high protein diets are to increase growth rates so animals grow quickly so making the farming more efficient and more profitable so it goes without saying that those methods do increase the amount of food that we can produce um, in some areas of the world, we're producing too much food, and so therefore many countries are exporting that food to uh, other places that has le have less food. Uh, but the question uh, in your spec, and also a question that we have to ask, is, is this ethical? So many more people um, are realizing, well, not realizing, that they want to know where their food has come from. Um, and is forcing animals to live in unnatural and uncomfortable conditions, is it cruel? Um, many people are more concerned about animal welfare. So there is a growing demand for food grown that takes account of animal welfare. So again, if we look at these pictures, we've got some hens, they are allowed to uh, spread out on a field. They're allowed to exhibit their more kind of natural uh, behaviors and then at night time they bring them into the shed to protect them um, here's a cow a beef cow well is that beef 
could be milk actually um and they're out in a field and they they're allowed to move around and then here we've got the pigs down here in the corner and those are free range pigs and they they exhibit behaviors that are more like they should be doing basically um so people are prepared to pay more money particularly in developed world in rich parts of the world they will pay for um these kinds of um conditions for the animals um so free range livestock responsible responsible methods of fishing and organic food production is uh, there is a demand for that so clearly there we can evaluate intensive farming in terms of advantages and disadvantages so i've got a list together now uh, obviously there is you could add to this list uh, but uh, let's go through it so advantages so high yield and quicker growth of crops and animals um, efficiency of food production it means there's less waste so less energy is wasted um, you meet the growing demand for food from a rapidly increasing population and some of the disadvantages there are ethical issues about animal welfare and quality of life of, the, of animals um, if there is an excessive use of energy as well so for example temperature controlled you're going to need to use electricity um, to do that and also uh, you might be producing large amounts of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane and also you're affecting habitats as well you're reducing uh, biodiversity I'm also going to be talking about biotechnology as well um, in terms of bio, um, ways of producing food in different ways related to genetic modification and also looking at alternatives to things like meat, for example, looking at mycoproteins. So that's in a later video. I hope you found that uh, video useful. Please do subscribe if you haven't already to Dr. Biology and there'll be more videos coming soon.